Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I want to show you guys how to make these really cute oven mitts. So the pattern for this will be for free over at my blog which is charmedbyashley.com. So get those links down below or in the information icon. But first I want to talk to you guys about my Facebook group. So this is the Charm by Ashley Facebook group. Over there you will find upcoming tutorials, sneak peeks behind the scenes, maybe my kids, and also a great place to share my tutorials with all of your Facebook friends. So I would love it if you went over there and liked the page and let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I cut out all my pieces. You're gonna need two opposite pieces for the outside and then two lining pieces. I'm just using cotton fabric, but you can use a thicker fabric if you like. And then I just cut out a rectangle that is about three inches by 12 inches and this will be for the loop on my oven mitt so I can hang it on a hook. So for the actual protectant material, you can use a product called Insole Bright. You can use quilt batting or a reflective cooler material. I'll have more information in the blog post. So if you're wondering about that, Insole Bright is the product that um, a lot of people use for these types of things like hot pads, oven mitts, and things like that. So um, that for sure can be used. I'm just going to be using quilt batting and um, you can use as many layers as you want. So if I'm just using quilt batting, then I would probably do one or two layers, maybe even three. The more layers you add, the more protection you will have and it will look a little bit more fluffy when you go to quilt it. So. I'm just going to place some pins with my quilt batting and then I will go over and do some top stitch. Um, I'm just going to follow the plaid pattern but you can of course do whatever you like if you want to do some free motion quilting, you know some cute little designs you can do that or you can just make it plain and simple like me. So after you're done that then you're going to take the two outer pieces and place those with the right sides together. And then we're going to sew all the way around leaving the cuff open. We're also going to take the two lining pieces and put those right sides together and we will again sew all the way around leaving the cuff open. So I'm going to sew it with a half inch seam allowance. When you're going around the thumb, you're just going to take it nice and slow, try to make your curves um, as even as possible. And then you're gonna get down to where the thumb and the index finger meet and you're gonna make a nice deep V so that when you continue on, you're still at your half inch seam allowance. And then after that, we are going to do the lining piece. But for this, we're gonna do a little different. We're going to go around the thumb, go around the fingers, but then in the back, we are going to be leaving a four inch gap and that is going to be for turning. So I'm just going to stop the machine and then I'll restart it to the end of the cuff. So after that, then we can take our scissors and we're gonna start to snip all of the curved edges. And this is just going to help um, the fabric lay flat because when you go around the curves, um, cotton fabric doesn't necessarily want to stretch because there's not really any stretch in it. So you're basically taking the pressure off. When you get to the thumb and the index finger, you're gonna wanna do a nice snip right down that corner. Try not to snip your stitches and then keep going and snip around. And then after that, we are going to take our main piece or our outer glove and we will turn that right sides out and try to poke out all of the little areas. And then we're going to put it together. So we're going to take our lining piece and put the outer portion inside of it. So we didn't turn the lining piece right side out. That one is still inside out. We're just putting the outer glove in the inner glove. And of course, you're gonna line up the thumb and the finger area and the cuff area. And I'm just going to take some clips or pins and then just make sure that that is nice and clipped in place. Try to line it up as best as you can. So now we're going to be working on the little tab piece that will be inserted. 
Um, so I'm going to take that little rectangle I made. I made it nice and long just because I'm going to cut it to size. So if you're making two mitts, then this is plenty. I'm going to fold in the raw edges and then I will fold it again. And then that will be my little strap. And then I'll just sew down the one side to finish it off. So now I'm going to cut off like about three inches, three or four inches, depending on how long you want your little loop to be. And then I'm going to place it in the back of the mitt along the, um, the seam. So I'll fold it in half and stick the loop part inside, lining the raw edges up with the raw edges of the cuff. And I'll clip that into place. And then we are going to sew all the way around the cuff. So again, we are going to be using that half inch seam allowance going around the cuff completely. Because remember we left that hole in the lining and that is what will flip it right sides out. And then after that, you're just going to turn your entire piece right side out. So you can pull out the outer mitt and then find that little hole and then stick it through the hole and then, you know, I think it's called birthing, actually. Birthing your project. And then voila, doesn't look beautiful. So make sure you, you know, poke at all your edges. You can stick the lining in with your hand, clip off all your little ends. And then I'm just going to do a top stitch along that cuff. So I'm just going to kind of make that seam nice and crisp by putting the clips on it. And then I just did another half inch seam allowance around the cuff. And then I close up the hole that was on the lining. So I just did a top stitch. Um, you won't see it because your hand will be in there. So no big deal. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, Please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because YouTube doesn't like to tell people that my tutorials are up. So pro tip, I don't know why I thought of this sooner, but use a lint roller. Oh my goodness. I, I never, you know, there's the little things in life that just, it just makes sense. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.